everybody hey <laughs> I'm Stacy Budge Camison with UrbanGypsy.com and welcome back to those who who join my live cast regularly and welcome to new people who are just uh, joining my live cast for the first time anyway um hey if you Why like you oops, I have to turn this down <laughs> so um so hey do me a favor if you really like this live cast please please share it share it with your friends um, I always welcome new people. I love the interaction and the questions that you guys bring stretch me and make me a better artist and, and I really appreciate you guys so much. So anyway, also um, uh, like this video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave me a comment if you have a question or just want to add to the conversation. So anyway, um, hello Maggie from Poland. Hey there. And Carly from Oregon. I, hey, I hear you guys got a ton of snow. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's incredible. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk about um, what I have had going on in February. February has been kind of a big month for me. Um, I've been really busy. Um, a lot of it has actually been on the back end and stuff that you guys wouldn't necessarily see. I've changed a little bit about the way that I've approached my project management um, just because, you know, sometimes us artists need project management. Um, I've also, uh, I've also been working on, 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 on both parts of my business. Now my business is actually kind of two businesses. I've got my art side and I've also got the teaching side. So the teaching stuff is like the e-courses, uh, the stuff that you get for free, these live casts, as well as my back to the basics, um, which as you probably know, if you've been following me, that's getting a big revamp. And so I'm closing enrollment for that back to the basics, but I'm going to talk about that a little later. Um, not back to the basics, beyond the basics. Um, it, it's, uh, the advanced weaving, art weaving class where I've taken a bunch of the techniques that I learned in this book collection that I have here and applied it to modern textiles and and just trends that, that you see in the yarns and the fibers these days. Anyway, all right. So what I wanted to talk to you guys mostly about though was some of the art stuff that's been going on for me. Um, once I kind of applied some of that project management, <laughs> then I kind of, um, I, I was able to get quite a bit done and, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot with all that I've been working on these days. So I'm going to start right out with, um, those clay dolls. <laughs> if you've been following me and I get this question all the time because it's, it is, it is indeed one of my favorite projects. Um, as you know that, uh, or you may not know, I love working in clay. I go to a local uh, community studio, and for two years I threw mugs, and then I decided I needed to try and incorporate some of that clay stuff into what I was doing fiber art-wise. And so I had made, uh, here's one of the figures, and this is where I'm going to hang uh, the weaving down from here. I have two of them. I have this one. Oh, this one. All right, I'm working on doing a series. And uh, part of the problem with with working with the, the community studio is I'm at the mercy of what their firing schedule is, and their big kiln broke. So, so it takes about a month to get one of these fired, and I can only make one at a time because of the weird size of this and how delicate it is in the process. I have to use a special... Um, like kiln shelf to, to, to transfer it and they have to be able to make room for it in the kiln. 
So I've been working on weaving the dresses for those, and I've been using this one because the width is for is is designed to be this wide. So I start. I warp this with the intentions of getting several dresses off of this. But let me tell you, I haven't been terribly thrilled with the dresses that I've pulled off so far. So I'm working on the third dress. I, I did a colored one that was hmm, not great. So I'm kind of letting that fester for a minute. I need to kind of step back from that. I've got one on there that I'm a little hopeful for, but I think I need to sit down with maybe my art journal and ooh, something in my eye <laughs> and hammer out a little better about where that's going. So yeah, I wanted that to to be good too. So I'm I'm gonna have to kind of, like I said, take a step back and play with that. And also too, I want to get a couple more of these figures done. The the intention is to have at least six of them. But boy, if it's taking a month at a time for it to even go through the kiln, um, and that's when they don't have a broken kiln, then that's a problem. So anyway, I'm taking a break from that. I also have. I think I worked on on this uh, during a couple of live casts that I did, and I really like the way this is working out. And I've got these uh, a couple more of these, um, and these are really easy and fast to kind of do in the in the um, clay studio. So. But I haven't been working on these either because I've been really working on some other stuff. But this is something really easy for me to kind of do, you know, upstairs while I'm watching TV with Bruce. I mean, if I'm working on my big loom, I'm down in the studio. But sometimes I want to spend time with my husband in the evening. So, so it's kind of, so yeah, these have been kind of back burnered as well, which is fine. I've got, you know, I wanted to get a series of those together by the end of the year. Probably at least six of those as well. Eight would be better. Maybe eight. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. So other than that, another thing that I cranked out this um, a couple weeks ago, and you may have seen this on my, on my Instagram channel, is I have been making these little woven bracelets. <laughs> They're really fun. They're a great way to use up some of my small little bits of hand spun. And I just love them. I do. I mean, I was looking for something that I could, you know, have an offering for that wasn't going to be as expensive as maybe my wall art. Um, so I've been working on these and it's been, I've really had a lot of fun doing this. Now the problem being is that the warp that I use for these three, and actually the fourth one I'm keeping for myself, um, with the way that I weave, you know, I'm kind of doing them one at a time, but it's all in this one section. So I'm pulling that warp, the head up and down a lot. And, and it actually started sawing through <laughs> some of the more delicate um, warp threads. So that was a problem because I, the intention is, is I'm doing, you know, six across. I also want to do, you know, several deep. So yeah, that was a problem. So I actually had to cut that warp off and I'm going to try with this plain warp because honestly, if you can see this, uh, is it focusing focus? This is actually um, more of a weft face weave. So you're not really seeing the warp as much. So I can put something a little, you know, really kind of plain on there because you're really not seeing the warp. And then that way I can use something stronger. So that was like, that was outright an engineering problem, but you know, lesson learned. Um, I also would like to do these actually on my big loom, but the problem being is my big loom is actually set up right now um, to do some more shawls. So if in, I don't know if you can see right here, you know, what I do is I cut off that warp and then I'll tie the new warp on 
and then that way I don't have to spend as much time threading through the um, reed and the heddles. I'll just tie it on and then wind it onto the back beam and and that saves some time. But if I did these bracelets, then I lose all of that effort. So I think I'm going to stick to doing them on the rigid heddle, even though I think it'd be faster on my big loom. And actually, I also have that strepto loom. So if I can get that weaving completed and pulled off, then actually maybe that would be good to put this on there. But it might have to wait till the second batch because I don't think I could weave that stuff off really fast. Anyway, so bracelets. We're playing with bracelets. Um, another thing that I've been working on is my hand spinning. I've got a ton of fiber. I mean a ton. I've got an entire closet full of fleece. I've got tons of dyed fiber. I've got so much freaking fiber. So I've been slowly, <coughs> excuse me, I've been slowly going through some of that fiber and when I spin, as opposed to doing some of the fat, chunky yarns, and I have a ton of the fat yarns, I've been working on spinning, you can see that, there we go, spinning way thinner. This is, is it focusing? Focus. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. I've been spinning way thinner. Um, with the idea of weaving in mind um, and weaving mostly on on my bigger loom so um, this I wouldn't use this for warp I would use this for weft but I've also been trying to do some art yarn thinner let me see if you can see that focus oh. <laughs> it's not focusing I think I have to hold it straight or not Anyway, I don't know if you guys can see that. Uh, I'm not sure if it's focusing. Anyway, this stuff is, I'm working on getting it a little thinner with, you know, this is going to be fun sticking out of the fabric and not necessarily terribly even, but that's what I'm doing as far as, as weaving, I mean, as spinning in terms of thinking about weaving you know I'm trying to think a little thinner I'm thinking singles as opposed to two ply and I'm thinking of texture being more little pops um, so I'm gonna experiment with that so that's what I'm learning as far as spinning goes yeah let me show you these these are some some of the singles that I've been spinning you see whenever I get some new fleece I will, uh, whenever I get new fleece, I'll, I'll take it and sample it. And here's, here's like a two ply that I've done, but I've got tons of this off white stuff. And it's where I, you know, when I'm trying out, uh, some new wool after I wash it, I'll, I'll just spin up a quick little single just to get a feel for how it spins. And I have tons of it. And this is what I've had the most fun spinning. Um, weaving with uh, especially the off-white stuff because I think it lends to pops of color but I'm going to show you a little more about that all right so I know that I've mentioned in the last few videos that I've um, become a member of my local weavers guild <laughs> so um, the triangle weavers guild um, here in in the Raleigh Durham area they're actually they have a fiber art center that's in Durham and then they meet in Chapel Hill and I know tomorrow night's their monthly meeting but I don't know if I'll be able to make it I, I don't drive well at night and Bruce is not able to take me so I'm gonna probably have to miss but um, but that's okay because they have these study groups that have been amazing um, and I've joined two of them and the first one is the contempt tea group which is focusing on contemporary weaving and and that means like art weaving and making art but and I say weaving loosely because a lot of what they've been doing is just kind of exploring contemporary art in general and incorporating fiber in a very loose sense of the term so 
that's been inspiring. I mean, that that has been just, I mean, to sit there with the study group and brainstorm some ideas has really, yeah, has been great. Uh, that contempt tea group met a couple of weeks ago. And our next challenge is working with uh, upcycled envelopes. And this is what I've collected so far. I'm sure I could probably go through my recycling and pull out tons because we get all kinds of junk mail. But how I'm going to translate this into something fiber arty is I'm not even really sure. I don't know. I just don't know. So I'm playing with that. Maybe making some paper and I don't I don't even know. <laughs> so I've still got to kind of toy with that idea a little bit. All right. And then I'm also part of the Shibori group because I need another fiber hobby, right? <laughs> and that that group is amazing. Now, when I worked at Lark, I um let me put this away. When I worked at Lark, I had the chance to to do some art direction on a Shibori book. And I found it really fascinating and it closely was tied into what I was doing as far as dyeing yarn at the time, even though the chemistry is way different. But it was interesting. I found it really interesting. So um, the, the study group is kind of working on the inspiration from this book, uh, the Stitch Shibori book, which is great. And this is from their library. I don't actually own this book. They have a great library. Anyway, so this book is really cool because it talks about making shibori but when you're instead of tying it like you normally do with like rubber bands and stuff like that um then i i end up um you you do stitching and here's here's this really messy sample see here's my sample of trying to do some stitched shibori and of course i marked it all up with <laughs> with this washable pen which looks like a hot mess right now but we'll see so I'm gonna do a few more and this is just a um, like a, a tea towel that you, a flower sack tea towel that you can get from Walmart or I think this is from Amazon anyway so I'm messing with that and I'll uh, probably do a few more before I hit a dye pot with that and and we'll see but I'm learning a lot about that that's for sure um, you know different things about stitching but anyway that's kind of yeah <laughs> because I need another hobby but that's the kind of things that they do and uh, with the study groups with the um, with the guild which is really cool and they also had like a workshop uh, uh, on Sunday um, talking about uh, ways that things that you can do with print on demand fabric that you can get from Spoonflower and I'll put a link in the um, show notes but Spoonflower is a uh, Spoonflower is a, a actually local to this area but they're you know they're an online business where they print do print on demand fabrics and you can either pick designs that they already have there or you can upload your own designs anyway that was really cool so yeah, so that's what I've been doing with my study groups. And that's been a lot of inspiration for, for a lot of stuff. I mean, those ladies have some amazing ideas and kind of networking with that community has been really, really, really awesome. I, so if you've got a local fiber guild, man, join up. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's really, it's a really wonderful resource. Um, at least I know the one in my area definitely is. All right, so outside of that, I also attended a Sayori weaving kind of gathering get together. Um, and I'm gonna put the woman's link um, below. Dawn Hummer has a local studio called Sayori Song and she is also a member of a gallery co-op in Dur downtown Durham called the uh, Pleiades. And they had a show called The Secret Ingredient. So she had an event of Sayori weaving that kind of married in with that secret ingredient. And you brought fibers and what your secret ingredient was gonna be for your weaving. And you sat there and wove all day. And OMG, it was the most fun I've ever had. It was great. It was wonderful. I'm gonna show you what I made. This 
this is what I made while I was there. It was just, it was fun. I got to use, she had, I was able to rent one of her Sayori looms to, to play on. Um, and this is what I made. And it was tons of fun. Most of the fiber was stuff that I brought myself. She had already warped the loom for me. Um, and then had some other stuff there. But a lot of this was my fiber. A lot of this is the, the off-white is this stuff, this, these singles that I have. And then I just brought things like, I have this, uh, these dreads. I brought those. I have a lot of of uh, hand spun singles from when I was fi would finish off the uh, spindle like I would be plying the two together and I'd have a leftover single so there's a ton of that type of stuff in here and I used just you know a bunch of different techniques and just played and we were there all day and this is what I made within that day and it's been wonderful and I love me some Sayori weaving but I have to be honest with you I don't think Sayori's that much different than the intuitive art weaving that that I learned from Deborah Lambert on the rigid heddle and actually she had some rigid heddle looms to do the same kind of weaving so um, I mean the loom the the thing that's wonderful about the Sayori loom is that it's really I mean they it's it's easy to warp it I mean you can snap a warp on a pre-wound warp into place they have the inside um, sets that can move re be removed if you want to work on another project but aren't finished on that one so that kind of frees up your need for a couple of looms um, and it's just the way it's designed is is really wonderful as far as that goes but I'll be perfectly honest um, and while I really appreciate I don't know if you can see here I mean I can appreciate where I was able to do you know some pattern weaving you could see this pink area where I did a zigzag pattern um, I do a similar thing <clears throat> excuse me on on this loom you can see here here I, I did a twill and this is this is a very very similar piece I mean I'm doing a similar thing on my four shaft loom I mean I guess the only difference is it takes a lot more time to to warp this and um but I don't think you know warping's a deal breaker I know before I got my four shaft loom I was really afraid of warping and yeah I've spent <laughs> some time warping this loom I mean to warp this loom sometimes can take a couple of couple of three days you know depending on how wide the piece is and how fine the yarn is um but as far as treadling I preferred treadling this loom over the Sayori um of course things like you know wanting to weave on this project and weave on the wraps at the same time would be solved if I had a loom where you could you know take the set out and replace it with a different one but I mean for the most part if if I'm going by you know end product of what I can produce I mean there's really I mean I'll even take it a step further oh, there's really not that much difference between you know this wrap and this wrap um you know this was the, I did that this wrap on this loom here so it's you really can do a lot of the same type of things um that doesn't mean I don't want to say Ori loom <laughs> I, <mean, laughs> I totally want to say Ori loom um but I don't think it's a deal breaker when it comes to art weaving and I, I'll be honest I haven't really I haven't really um, spent a lot of time, I, well I guess I've spent some time, I've been hesitant to like really go all in talking about a four shaft loom because I know a four shaft loom can be intimidating and I think you know you can get the same type of effect with you know a, a cheaper version with a rigid huddle um, and I think part of what makes the Sayori um, so appealing is that it it kind of the loom 
has a lot of innovations that takes the worry out of the technical aspects of getting a, a weaving prepared to do. And it frees up your mind to, to be able to like actually just sit down and weave intuitively and just not have to worry about all that stuff. So anyway, that's, that's what I've learned. That's, that I think is the big thing that I learned a by doing these wraps. Now this is, let's see, I did this wrap. I think I showed you guys this a couple weeks ago. This is one of the wraps that I did on my four shaft loom. This is the wrap that I did on um, in that Sayori workshop. This is another wrap that I did this month off of my four shaft loom. And then this is the wrap that I did. This is the first wrap I did. This one I did last fall right after I got my loom uh, work for the first time. So, so yeah, so there's four, four wraps, three of them that I did this month. I wanted to try and get another three done this month and that just didn't happen. And I don't know, I, I wanted to have six woven wraps done for the month of February. But you know, I don't think it's not, it's that it's not that possible. I think I just didn't schedule the time in properly. So that's my goal for next month is to go ahead and get those six wraps done. Anyway, um, and also the other thing I wanted to do is to get these, these bracelets, some more of these bracelets done. I really, I really like them. I mean, it's a nice, a nice, quick, gratifying little project to work on. So that's my goal for next month is that, and, um, and I'm keeping as far as the weaving goes down to those two projects, the wraps and the bracelets, you know, the, the clay dolls is, is just on the back burner for now while I kind of let that fester and so are the the clay tiles that I'm working on that's that's kind of on the back burner and I'm just kind of focused on that the shawls and the bracelets this month um and the the whole reason why I'm pulling this stuff together is I'm trying to pull together a portfolio um I want a collective of work that a I can offer for sale and b that I can have that's representative of what I make and have that online so that's the goal um, and to get then that I want to have in place by the end of the year so six more shawls another set of bracelets but the main focus is going to be on this e-course revamp and so like I mentioned the beyond the basics is getting a rework um, it is a lot of you guys probably found me through my getting started art weaving video tutorial um, and I'll put a link down in the show notes for that. Um, and it, it just shows you how you can get started art weaving on a rigid huddle loom. Well, this takes it a step further where I take some of the old school weaving techniques from these books that I have and I translate it to some hand spun yarns, to the chunky art yarns, and to the different colors and materials and stuff that are available these days. Also kind of taking into account the trends. I mean, some of these books are pretty crunchy granola, uh, 70s and 80s kind of stuff. And I know that it's making a comeback, but I try to make it a little more modern and, and not as much as, anyway. So yeah, there's, um, that's what I, that was the goal when I started that Back to the Basics is to kind of take it a little step further, give you a little more techniques to show some some textures that aren't just necessarily textured yarns and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I have always knew that those techniques though could be expanded a little further and that's what I'm taking the time to do. So enrollment for the class as a whole is going to be closing um, at the end of the day on Friday. And from that point on, the classes will be offered individually, the lessons. And it, so if you wanted to know just a couple of, you know, smaller techniques and just learn those one at a time, then that's the way to go. But if you go ahead and sign up for the, the class now, as I release those classes, and I have um, 10 more, 10 classes scheduled uh, to release over the next year. So as those release the people who are already signed up for the beyond the basics class the one that's closing enrollment on friday will have access for free for those classes 
So that, that would be the reason why you would want to sign up. Anyway, link is already below in this description of this video. I'll put another link in the show notes. And I think that's it as far as my notes go. Again, I'm Stacy Budge Camison with Urban Gypsy. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up or share it with your friends or leave me a comment and I'm going to look and see if there's any questions. All right, Connie Muse, hi from Asheville. Hi. Uh, Renee LeBlanc from Missouri. Carly, yes, it's another snow day here. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous of the snow. It's already spring here. And I, by spring, I mean wet and rainy and just... Uh, Lava Watch from Tennessee. Epiphany London, hi. Uh, so, Zolde Raven from Denmark. Hey, from Denmark. Uh, quilling. Oh, paper beads and oh, that's a great idea. Ooh, Carly girl, that is um. Mhm. Mm uh, thank you for that. Yes, I'm going to totally look at that. That's a great idea. Even maybe some paper sequins or something that I can string on and then weave into something. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, beads. Yes, I'm definitely. Hello from the Netherlands. It's nice to see your projects. Do you ever weave Sakiori style? Sakiori style. I don't know that I know. I'm, I know maybe I'm supposed to know what Sakiori is. Is that where they tie the strings together and then weave it and then leave it to, to, for the ends to, to show up? Liked and shared. Thank you, Renee, for liking and sharing. Um, I think that's what Sakiori is. I'm not sure. Um, I'll definitely look it up. If it's if that's what it is, I did see a sample of of that where they it's kind of like if you took a magic ball, you know, where you tie your ends together and then as you weave, you just let it be what it is, and and then the ends become part of the texture. And somebody had a piece of that that gallery thing for the Sayori weaving, and it was just beautiful. It was so pretty. So let me know if that's not what you meant. Yes, I've started adding paper to some of my knit or woven items. You know, that's awesome, uh, uh, Carly. You know, and I'm wondering too, I mean, I've seen where people have been able to spin yarn out of newspaper. I'm wondering if I could do something similar with these freaking envelopes. Now I know too, um, and they just said envelopes, so I could also see about the Tyvek envelopes that some stuff comes in. Yeah, I like that. I like the direction you're thinking. You could weave material cut into into ribbons. Yes. Yeah, I think that would be really kind of cool. Yeah, because I was starting to think even, hmm, I'll just make a book out of this. But that's totally not like really fiber art, but book arts. Even though I like doing book arts, but again, going down the path of an, another whole other... Uh, craft. You know how it is. Anyway. All right. I'm off to go research what Sakiori is. And and that's it for this week. Next week I'm going to talk about dreads because I've got a dread class offering coming up for you guys and I wanted to share with you a little bit about what you can use dreads for. So um, so there's that. So sign up for the Beyond the Basics if that interests you or if you think um, that you want to want want to learn some more techniques uh, for art weaving um, that are based on like old school weaving techniques. Anyway, there you have it. And that's it. So thanks for joining me. Thanks for uh, subscribing and sharing and commenting and liking. And I will see you guys next week. If you have any further questions, either leave them in the comments below or come join us on the Fiber Art Collective and, uh, and share those questions there. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.